Hi everybody, welcome to my channel. You won't believe how easy it is to create an art journal page with texture and color. Let me show you. I'm going to use the 7x10 Canva Mixed Media page and I am going to use my secret weapon, a napkin, as an Insta background. This napkin is called Midnight Sparkle. I love the bright bold colors, the sparkle that's on there and I'm going to use that to start my color story as well as add wonderful texture to my page. I'm using the rotary cutter to get a nice straight edge. I've removed the two excess plies and then I am going to glue this down with my fluid matte medium. I'm not concerned about getting wrinkles in here. In fact, I want that. Putting a layer of napkin on top of an art journal page gives you amazing texture. And I love what it does to it and how paint goes on it afterwards. I'm putting a coat of the fluid matte medium underneath and on top and I'm making sure that I have good coverage so everything is properly adhered. Often with napkins, once you put the fluid matte medium on, the colors brighten. Look at those bright, beautiful colors. And that's my color story. Once it's completely dry, I'm cutting off the excess and I'll be checking to make sure that I've got good adhesion all the way around. There's always little ends and pieces that didn't quite get stuck down. So I'm just going to make sure that it's all completely adhered. I don't want it to peel up. So now I am going to start playing with the background. Now there are some, the tops of the wine, of the champagne bottles there. So I'm just using white gesso and blocking that out. And then I'm putting some white gesso here and there. Now what this does, it just kind of alters the napkin part enough so that you, you see it more as the a layer of color and texture. And when I'm rubbing on this, it's really bringing out the texture that's there. I want to add a little bit more yellow, so I'm going over top of some of the areas where I have the white gesso. And now I'm adding some magenta. Same thing. But all these colors were colors that were in the napkin. I'm just building on what I started with with the napkin. So you don't have to reinvent the wheel. You can borrow a color scheme from the artists that have created them. Then I'm adding a little bit of turquoise that's in there. And as you can see, some of it I'm going over top of the Happy New Year lettering. Now I want to add some interesting patterning. So I'm using this stamp from Stamperia. I'll list it in the description box below. I absolutely love this stamp. I'm putting white acrylic paint on it with a makeup sponge and then stamping. And again, I'm taking this from what was in the napkin. It had that sparkle like uh, fireworks. And that's why I chose this stamp because they work together. I'm not worried about getting a perfect stamp. Some of the stamps I'm stamping off the page. So you just get a partial stamp loving the look of this. And you can see we're now reclaiming it. Now I'm going to use this peacock from supercoloring.com, but I shrunk it down to fit my page. I'm thinking maybe I won't keep the legs, but then it looked funny without it. So I'm going to keep the, keep the legs on it. Now, again, I chose the peacock here because it's kind of that explosion like the fireworks, it opened up its tail. So again, I'm taking my lead from the napkin. We have these bright, beautiful colors. At this time, I'm thinking that I'm going to keep the peacock white. I flip through my sentiment packs 
and I come up with the one, be open to whatever comes next, because I'm looking at the peacock now, and the tail is wide open. So I figured that the sentiment goes with my picture. And I like the big, the bold font that this sentiment has. This one came from my change sentiment pack. And I'm just playing with the, how I want it to look. I'm thinking I might put the peacock a little bit off the page, a little off center. Happy with that decision, I'm just going to glue it down again with Fluid Matte Medium. This peacock is just printed on regular copy paper, nothing fancy. And I'm getting a good coat on top. As I said, I'm thinking at this time that I'm going to keep it white, but if I want to colorize it, I want it to be kind of a non-porous surface, not just raw paper. I'm going to give the coat, the peacock a coat of clear gesso. That'll further create a non-porous surface. And I just wrap my, my brush in saran wrap because I know I'm going to have to glue the sentiment down. I want to add a little bit more detail to my background, so I'm using Bright Aqua and this Leafy Fans stencil. This part, motif part of it, kind of reminds me of the peacock tail. So again, I'm working with what I have. So one decision has led to another, has led to another. And yes, I could have done this before I put the peacock on, but I didn't have the idea till now. I want to add a little bit of contrast to the background, so I'm grabbing Prussian blue and using that same Leafy Fans stencil to stencil on it. Every time you add a layer, it knocks everything else back. I like how this motif, especially in the blue, looks with the peacock tail. The shapes are very similar. So if you did a different focal point, you may want to look for a different stencil that corresponds with what you have. I wanted to knock back some of the blue, so I grabbed this stencil, which is called Screen View, and I'm putting a little bit of white on it. It's just knocking back some of that blue a little bit. That one kind of made a mess, so I'm just wiping it back. And I can do that because everything underneath it is acrylic paint. It's permanent. I like the combination of the Leafy Fans stencil with the Screen View stencil. Now I'm shading, I'm edging, going to edge the page and shade around the peacock. Initially, I'd try using the Prussian Blue and that's not giving me enough shading, so I switched to black here, which is usually what I use. And I'm using an angle brush and shading around it. Shade, edging the page kind of frames the page, and shading around the peacock makes the peacock or your focal image stand out from the background. pushes the background back a little bit further. I wish you could see the texture that that napkin has given this whole piece. You can see the difference that black makes compared to the blue. It's just more striking. I 
I've decided that now that I am going to colorize the peacock, so I start with what I know. I'm going to do, so I'm doing his body, a little bit of his head, and then I do a little bit on his tail feathers. But I am kind of just figuring it out as I go. I didn't know if I was going to paint the whole thing or not. And I chose this turquoise color because I like how it stands out from the background. And when I think of peacock, I think turquoise pe colors. And I'm using a brush that is smaller. Here I'm just deciding what else I want to paint and I decide I'm just going to add a little bit more turquoise around this part of the feather. I'm using acrylic paint to add the color. You could use pit markers, you can use watercolor crayons, anything that you prefer to use. And I'm adding some gold to the middle. I like how this brings out the yellow that's in the background and gives a little bit of shimmer. Yellow is fairly translucent, so you, if you want it more opaque or better coverage, you really want to give it two coats. I'm happy with what is colored so far and then I'm just going to add a little bit of shading to colorize the rest of the feathers. So I'm using the same angle brush and the black paint and just going around the elements on the tail. If this was raw paper, if, the, if I hadn't put a coat of the matte medium and the white, the clear gesso on top of it, it might soak into the paper. But because I did that, it became non-porous and it allows me to do what I'm doing now and get a nice effect. I just tweak, add a little more shading as I see fit. You can always add more to get the effect that you are happy with. So back to the letters and I decide that I didn't want the lines on there. Showing, I mean, you can change the sentiment however you want. You can break it up to have it fit your composition. Blow them up, shrink them down. They really are very versatile. So now that I am happy with the orientation, I am going to just glue this down with the fluid matte medium. So I take the brush out of the saran wrap and it only goes in the water when I'm completely done. If 
and just wipe off the excess. Now I'm just adding a little bit more fine detail with this script stamp. And I'm using black acrylic paint on the stamp. Once everything's dry, oh, it's me, I had to splatter with gold. Then I dry it and I'll take off the tape that I have that just keeps the coils clean. Grab my Posca pen and I'm just outlining the sentiment. And that brings us to the end of this art journal page. So it really is easy. Start with a napkin as the Insta background. It gives you patterns, shapes, and colors. So you don't have to overthink it. Until next time, go get creative.